All right, guys, we're going to talk about productivity today. Just as a reminder, we won't meet next week. We're going to be doing a couple of videos and then just one page re responses and then Thanksgiving. And then we'll just meet uh, for one more class on December 3rd. And then we'll have a final exam review where we'll kind of go over some of the main points that we've talked about. And make sure you guys uh, remember and recall those things. And then final exam will be super quick. Yeah? It's December 12th, 11 to 12. So if you come at 11, and then you can have as long as you want. You can stay as long as you want. But you can't show up at like 12.45 and then stay as long as you want. Then I'll leave it at 12. So it should only take you about eight to 10 minutes for the final exam. So just come in at 11, you'll be, everybody will be done by 11.15, 11.20, okay? Shouldn't be too hard. This class isn't meant to be super hard or anything. All right, productivity. Anybody have any questions, other, other questions? Okay. <clears throat> So to start out, uh, what are some things that you guys do that you think helps make you more productive? Making a to-do list. To -do list. Why, does that, why do you think that helps you be more productive? OK. <clears throat> so it motivates you. You put some things down that you need to do, and you're like, hey, I want to mark things off. So you get them done, and you can cross them off. Or if you didn't make the to-do list, maybe you wouldn't have done all of the things. So you're more productive because you have a list and where you're going, okay. Who else? Something else besides the to-do list. You guys are productive people, right? <laughs> what else do you do? All right, we'll keep thinking about it. And as we go through, maybe some of the things we talk about, you do, or you do it a little differently then you could share with the rest of the class because we all want to be more productive, right? We want to be able to accomplish more by doing less. I like that idea. So if you have things to share that could benefit the rest of us, then uh, feel free to share those things, okay? So some people, have you guys, you guys know anybody that overworks? That like workaholic? Yeah, works all the time? Watch a video in a little bit about what that looks like over in Japan, uh, where they actually uh, die from overworking. Pretty interesting. So hopefully nobody's doing that. But uh, what do you guys think about this? Is being busy a good thing? Who thinks being busy is a good thing? OK. Can you be busy doing stuff but not really accomplish anything, but you appear or feel like you're busy? Yeah. So you want to ask yourself, are you busy or are you productive, right? Um, accomplishing tasks, whether it's a to-do list or whatever it is, like at work, I I, there's people that come to work and they work, let's say they're working 40 hours a week and they are busy and they seem busy, but they don't at the end of the day have much to show for it, right? Where other people may come and work three hours and leave. But at the end of the day, they had accomplished a lot more of the outcomes that they wanted to than the person that was here for eight hours, a whole day. So which employee would you rather have? Somebody here from eight to five that seems busy and is busy doing something, or the person that's here for four hours, half the day, but actually accomplishes and is productive in things? I'd rather take the four hour person, right? So we don't want to just be busy. We want to be productive. So when you're studying or doing homework or um, interacting in a relationship or whatever it is, you want to think about the outcome that you desire and what are the things that I can do to most quickly reach that outcome rather than just, oh, yeah, I spent four hours doing homework last night. But I was also watching the game, and then I was texting with people. And so really, what did you You did like about 20 minutes worth of focused effort over four hours. So 
it's different. It's, there's a difference. So I like a couple of the quotes. Denzel Washington says, don't mistake movement for progress. You may be doing a lot, but aren't progressing towards your goals. And then John Wooden, famous coach, said, never mistake activity for achievement. Just because you're active, busy, doing stuff, doesn't mean you're achieving anything. So if we differentiate those and start working towards achievement of reaching goals and being productive, then you can find that you can do that in a lot less time, especially if it's focus time. So we're going to talk about some of those things. Have you guys, uh, some, you know, sometimes there's bragging rights. You guys yourselves or have friends, they're like, oh, I'm so busy. I'm like, they're like, how are you? I'm so busy. I'm so stressed. And they're always stressed and always busy and always doing things. You guys know people like that? Yeah. If you're like that, then my challenge is by the end of our discussion, you stop doing that because being busy isn't anything to brag about. That means you don't have control of your life. Instead, say, life's going great. I am being so productive. I do these type of things and then I have time for myself to relax and do whatever I want because I focus. Stop saying I'm so busy. It's this bragging badge of honor that we're busy, yet we're not really accomplishing anything. So, uh, in fact, some people, right, that you know, they're, the length of their to-do list, not that to-do lists are bad, but the length of their to-do list is uh, almost equal to their self-worth. If they don't have anything on their to-do list, then, man, nobody needs me, or I'm not really accomplishing anything, and so they don't feel good about themselves. You guys know people like that as well? that their self-worth comes from the length of their to-do list? Yeah. That's not healthy uh, either, according to research and what I think. So it's OK to have a to-do list, but that doesn't align with your self-worth. In fact, if there's days that I have very little on my to-do list, that's fantastic, right? That means I then can, if you've ever re read uh, Covey, uh, look at the different quadrants and kind of take time to journal or think about goals and areas of life and vision that we want to do. So. I restarted everything and it's working now. So when I started it, it was off. I just pushed the on button and it was just blinking and was fuzz. And it wasn't connecting to anything. I tried to push a couple buttons down here, didn't, so I turned it off and turned it back on. It took about three or four times longer to start. Okay. And then it started and I thought it was just not gonna start because I was thinking maybe the bowl burned down or something. But then it started. So. Okay. I'm good. I'm go till 12:50, and after, if after you want to look at it and see what's going on, then that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Um, so you got to remember last time when I ta told you that the thoughts we put in our minds really affect the outcomes that we have. So if you're telling yourself, "I'm so busy," or "I don't have time for myself," or these kind of things then you tend to take on too much and don't know how to say no to people, right? And so today we're going to talk a little bit more about how we say no and creating a not to-do list and these type of things to allow us to focus on things we care about and be more productive rather than just bragging about how long our to-do list is and we're so busy. So let's shift the mindset from being busy to how can I do less, have more time for myself, and accomplish the goals that I have. But guess what? It's hard to move towards productivity and accomplish the goals that we have if we don't have any goals, right? We talked about setting smarter goals. So we need to think about, slow down a little bit. Think about our life and what success means and what goals we want to have. And again, fewer goals is better than just tons of goals, right? So a few key goals that we want to take a tremendous leap forward in our life that will make our life better and possibly those around us and start saying no to some of these other things and focusing on accomplishing, being productive, not just being busy. It's a, it's a mind shift. You got to think of it differently. All right, so here's some different uh, dangers of overworking. So this is usually for, like I said, these are out in the uh, communities, and so most people are working. Many of you are working as well, and your schoolwork counts as working. So when I say working, just think about the type of work that you do, whether it's student, or out in uh, actual work. So it's uh, often easy to think that the situation is temporary, right? Like being busy and or working hard. And so you say, ah, I just need to work hard in extra hours and instead of 40 hours a week, 60 or 70 hours a week, because then in a year, 
I reach this milestone and then I can relax, right? You guys know people like that? They're like in their job, they're like, I'm a new, I'm a new employee and I just have to sh show and demonstrate my commitment if I can just get to here, right? As a uh, faculty member, right? I'm going through tenure right now. So I could come and be for like four or five years. I just gotta push, gotta push because then when I get tenure, then it's okay. Then I can relax and then I get tenure and then there's something else, just this. And so it always seems like just a temporary push. The problem is if there's always temporary things that then come up and we don't celebrate our wins, then we're always living in stress and overworking and not really taking time for ourselves, which is called a work-life balance, right? Being able to manage that. So um, interesting enough, um, when we overwork, there's decrease in job satisfaction. Who would have thought, right? You work too much, then you your job satisfaction goes up. When would that not be true? When would overworking or working a lot more than maybe what's expected not lead to decrease in job satisfaction? What do you guys think? When the money's great. The money's great? <coughs> good, good thought, but no. Because, uh, I mean, maybe if you're working for yourself and the more you work, then it comes into more money. But if you're just salaried or something and getting a lot of money, overworking still leads to dissatisfaction, right? Um, anybody else? What's another idea? What if work, what you do for work, you have a passion for, right? When you go, it energizes you. When you go, you're helping people or whatever you're doing is really just stimulates your mind and is energizing and you love it and you lose track of time when you're doing it. Wouldn't that be great if all of us were doing work like that? <laughs> so if you can get into a field where you lose track of time because you love it so much, then more work maybe doesn't necessarily mean decrease in job satisfaction, right? But you still have to have a, li a balance of family and friends and other things and, and what you're doing. So, uh, you know, just saying it says no success in life. In fact, I have this maybe as my tagline. No success in life can compensate for failure in the home I have. So for me, a priority and a value of mine is that my wife and kids are more important than work, right? Or some other, my hobbies and other things. And so if I'm doing awesome here at work and succeeding and super successful and working extra hours, but then at home I'm failing or with my relationship with my wife, I'm failing or I'm not connecting with my kids or can't go to their soccer games and things. Is that really success for me? It's not. I, I res start resenting work and getting, uh, un being unsatisfied, right? Uh, on the other hand, some people find that when they, and this is typically true, that this is, um, I'm doing a generalization here. For men, when they go to work, there's things that they can do and they know what to do, right? Do this task, I'm good at that, I do it, I'm done, I feel good about myself. But when they go home, sometimes they may feel lost, right? I, like I said, I do some counseling and, and coaching and things like that, and I found that uh, for a lot of men and some women, their identity is at work, and then they go home, and especially if the relationship, say, with their spouse, right, or the person they're living with isn't so great, and they're arguing a lot, or they, you know, and they're like, well, I don't know what to do, and, and then maybe she says something, and then the guy tries to fix it, and she's like, I don't want you to fix it, I just want you to listen, and he's like, I can't do anything right. Then they start doing what? Avoiding going home because of the mess, and not feeling in control and not knowing how to handle that and stay at work longer because they have control and understand work and accomplish things and feel good about themselves, right? So you need to work on all areas of your life and make sure that, that you don't fall into that trap because that's not helpful either and that leads to overworking, which then your relationships go down. Um, I thought this was interesting, poor health. Due to stress, anybody think that stress leads to poor health? Yeah, lots and lots of research about this. So here's some of the things. Physical symptoms of stress, tension headaches, rapid breathing, increased blood pressure, release of stress hormones like epinephrine and cortisol, which aren't good for your body, digestive problems, higher cholesterol, decreased libido. 70% of American workers experience stress-related illnesses, and there's lots and lots, I just wrote down a few. And so if we're stressed out because there's always more to do, right? Our to-do list maybe never goes away. 
And instead of a badge of honor, we just are like, okay, planning, I can keep working on this tomorrow. But we need to set aside, a t aside time to be able to manage our life with work. And that's the same with schoolwork, right? All right, let's go on to the next. Let's see. Oh, I wanted to show you this. I just uh, saw this. This just came up, and I was sent it to a couple of colleagues and thought I'd send it to my uh, department head and dean. I don't know if they would like this, so I don't know if I'm going to send it to them or not. But what does this say? Microsoft pilots a four-day week, and productivity goes up by 40%. How the heck could that happen? Less stress, you what? Yeah, you're like, I only have four days, so I need to focus instead of just chatting and getting on Facebook and who knows what people do to waste time at work, right? 40% productivity increase by dropping a day. That seems counterintuitive, right? Research shows that once employees hit 50 hours and you go over 50 hours, then productivity decreases in a, in a large way, right? It, big drop in productivity. And in fact, then the opposite, maybe, maybe we don't go down to one day a week, right? But four days a week and productivity goes up. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I have a, a good friend that was a um, professor up in Utah, and uh, he really is engaged and loves real estate. So we actually did one of our first real estate deals together of one of the houses that we have out in Arizona. And uh, he decided to, after how many years did he do? You know, four years of undergrad and then six years of master's and PhD, 10 years of school, he would quit doing professor and go and do uh, real estate full time. So he's doing that and making lots more money than I am. But uh, he's doing great and loves it. But he has a life coach. He pays $25,000 a year and goes four times a year out to California and meets with him. And one of the things he posted on Facebook is, that he was challenged by his life coach because he's one that just always has to be busy, right? He's always on his phone and replying to emails and posting things on social media. I mean, he is super busy. For, for us as academics, we're supposed to be publishing, and most academics maybe publish one to two, if you have a good year, three or four a year publications. He was doing an average of 12 to 15 a year, okay? So that's the same type of thing he does with real estate. He was challenged by his uh, coach to only work four days a week instead of six, because he was working Monday through Saturday. He's got four little boys, and he's like, this is gonna be super, super hard for me, but I'm gonna do it. And guess what? His productivity went up, and he has more time now. He still does four days a week. Pretty amazing, guys. So you gotta think about how do I, how can I be more productive in less time? How does that work? Let's keep talking about it. Anybody have any thoughts about any of these? Or suggestions? No? All right. Anybody ever heard this from parents or teachers or others? Like, like keep yourself busy. Be useful. You know, uh, be doing stuff. Don't just ever be sitting around. My mom does this. She's like a busybody. She's always doing stuff. She sits down and watches TV, then she's crocheting or something and doing stuff. Not that that's bad, but... Why would that maybe be counterproductive, this mentality, this thought that people tell? Be busy. Make yourself useful. Always be doing stuff. Yeah, right? Especially you guys and the people that are on our phones all the time, right? Our uh, synapses are getting wired differently that we always have to have stimulation. And it's amazing. You can do a, by the way, free to focus. There's an assessment on productivity. But <clears throat> it's amazing when you quiet your mind. You know, anybody do uh, meditation or yoga, or there's apps even on your phone that sets you through, and you can do this for even five minutes in the morning. And they've shown what it does to the stress level in our bodies and the energy level that we have and the ability to think more clearly, thus being more productive. Right? If we're always being busy or making ourselves useful and never have any quiet time or downtime, and we always think, oh, I'm driving to, uh, to school and I've got 
10 minutes in the car. I need to be listening to the radio, or I need to be listening to a podcast, or I need to be listening to an audiobook. I, I struggle with this, because I always want to be listening or doing something, right? Because my mom got it into me. And so this morning, even, I was getting, uh, I usually listen to a podcast as I get ready, and I said, you know what, I'm just going to not listen to a podcast and just let my brain calm down and think. And I had two great ideas this morning that I had to write down because I wasn't listening to a podcast. And I was listening to a podcast or an audio book on making money or success principles bad. No, and I still do that. But we need time for our mind to settle down. Is this making sense to you guys? So if you're always busy, I challenge you, one of the challenges is to take some time each day, even if it's five minutes, and just relax and think and don't be doing anything and uh, see what happens. All right, so here's the death by overwork in Japan that's pretty interesting. Hopefully it'll make you not want to uh, get in a job that you overwork. Oh, boy. You guys know this isn't working well, so maybe I'm going to have to send this out. I'm going to narrate it. This lady went to Japan, and she's uh, finding these guys on the street. And so she's circling their body, kind of like you'd find them if they were dead. They're not dead, but these are businessmen in Japan who go super early to work, and then they try to come home at like uh, 1 or 2 a.m., and they have to be back by 5, and they're trying to get a few hours of sleep, and they fall asleep on the street before they can get home because they're overworked. Does that sound like an awesome life? You guys want to do that? Why would anybody do this? Look at she's finding them all over the place. What's the goal? Why, why are they trying to, uh, why are they working so hard? Why would you guys feel like you wanted to work so hard? For money? For what? You thought you'd be more productive? Yeah. Right? They even have these things, <laughs> cartoons that they make. She's like, I'm ready to go home. Oh, you are? Here's all the stuff. So anyway, you can't hear it, but uh, I'll send the link out so you guys can watch that if you want to. It's called Death by Overwork in Japan. It's super sad in my mind. So we're talking about being more productive and doing more, accomplishing more, by actually doing less, right? So does that sound good to you guys? Doing less but accomplishing more? Hopefully you've already started thinking about some ways that you can do that. But uh, if you're driving down the, the highway and your uh, gas gauge goes down and your light comes on, how far do you get? Who, who's like, oh, I still got, I still got time. I can, I can do that. And they keep going, right? How far do you guys think that you can go on when your tank, when your light comes on? In real life, yeah. No, no, as a car. How far do you think you can go? Yell it out. Come on. Fifty miles. Fifty miles. Wow. Yeah. This is you right here. Yeah. Okay, it depends on the car, maybe, but it usually comes on and you have about uh, 15 to 20, maybe 25 miles left, right? Depending on the car. So it says here they did a study <clears throat> and uh, people are maybe like 20, 25, even 30 miles from work and they're like, oh, I can still get there, right? And they keep driving. And it says this uh, Victoria Insurance Company, um, the average person thought that they could go at least 40 miles. And it said nearly a million motorists ignored the low fuel light and got stranded. And the reason was they overestimated how far they could drive on empty. So now taking it from the car to ourselves, because the shift is moving from time management to energy management, managing our energy, right, the fuel that we have. Not just our time, but we're more productive when we have energy, we're doing those most productive things, right? Rather than at the end of the day, if you're super tired, like after I eat and whatever, there's like this 
hour or so that I'm <clears throat> in like a food coma or something, that's when I'm like going through emails and stuff because I don't have to have a lot of brain power to do that. I'm not working on a manuscript that I need to be focused and um, creative on, right? That's more like for me in the morning time. So anybody else do that? Realize when you have your energy, when you have the most focus, when your brain power is the best, and then say no to the other things and focus that time with the most difficult or important task that you have to do. Anybody do that? Okay, that, if you do, then that's gonna make you way more productive. That's when the person can come for three or four hours in the day and accomplish more than the person that's there eight to 10 hours because they use that time. What do a lot of people do? They come in late and then they're chatting with people and this is the most productive time when they have the energy. Then they get on and they're on like emails for a while and then they do something and then somebody comes, they get interrupted and then it's like lunchtime already and their best four hours of concentration time is gone, if that's when people do it the best, and then they're trying to catch up, and then they get to the end of the day and go home and like, man, I don't know where the day went, and I was busy, I'm not sure exactly what I did, but I know I was doing stuff. Where a productive person would do what? They could put a sign on the door that says, don't bother me. They could uh, put their phone on, um, on mute or whatever so it doesn't ring. They could not check their email, heaven forbid, right, for three or four hours. They they could do it, maybe see the most important things and do it right in the morning and then not look at it and do the rest until maybe 11 or 12. Anybody thought of that? Every time their phone buzzed, they wouldn't get it out and check it because there's a, um, we, we uh, let's see, where, where is this on here? It says, uh, we think that we can mic or, um, multitask and they say that that's kind of a, a lie. And instead of multitasking, it's called microtasking. And when we get distracted from something, sometimes it takes uh, seven to 10 minutes to get back in the same frame of work, mind and working uh, as productively as when we got distracted and went and did something else. So people, instead, they manage their fuel, their energy, and they say, I'm gonna have uninterrupted time to accomplish this task. I'm gonna focus an hour and a half or two hours just on this, and I'm not going to check email, I'm not gonna check te texts, I'm not gonna allow people to knock on my door because I'm gonna put a do not disturb sign on it. And I'm gonna focus. You guys think that would be helpful in being productive? Yes. People that become productive uh, do stuff like that. So, again, it doesn't have to do with managing time, but uh, managing your energy. And the more energetic you feel, the more productive you're gonna be. So you have to figure out, hey, what time of the day do I feel most energetic? Do I have this energy? And can I set aside distractions and during that time focus in on those things most important, okay? So do that and then you have more time to yourself because you can do more in less time. Um, I like what Oprah Winfrey says about this. She says, as far as energy goes, you are responsible for the energy you create for yourself and you're, the res you're responsible for the energy you bring to others. I think once we realize, in essence, we can manufacture our own energy, we take responsibility for it. It's not up to somebody else to motivate me or to make me energetic. That is my responsibility. So she's talking about, before this, that it's a mindset, right? So sometimes you can, during the day, I have more energy during this time. But that doesn't mean you can't kind of hype yourself up. So if you look at these gurus that are kind of like the self-help people, you know, Dean Graciosi or, or that you'll watch next week or uh, Tony Robbins or things, right? How, how can you get more energy? What can you guys think to do that would give you more energy? Say you're feeling sleepy in the afternoon, it's 2 p.m., 3 p.m., and you you're feel less productive. You're sitting in the chair trying to write something. What could you do to bring, re, be responsible and be, uh, bring the energy? Do what? Eat more? Yeah, if you haven't eaten and you're like low, right, get a snack. Would it be good to have like a heavy snack or something that's maybe a handful of nuts or something, right? So eat, eating something maybe, what else? Water's good, yeah. What else? Anybody get up and move around, right? Get some energy going, take a walk, do some push-ups, uh, jumping jacks, right? Do something to get blood flowing. Right, drink some water, uh, do some deep breathing, do some different things. 
So here's three secrets of managing your energy. If energy is so important, and that's what's going to make us more productive, and we can do it in a uh, less amount of time, right? Remember the 80-20 rule? 80% 80 of the stuff gets done in actually 20% of the time. Then how do we do this? Don't sacrifice sleep for work. A lot of people do that, right? Lots and lots of research. I'll just share a little bit on the importance of sleep. Fuel your body with whole foods, not just candy bars and soda, right? If you eat good things, it's like if you had a uh, you know, Lamborghini or something, a Porsche, nice car. Are you going to go and put the crappiest gas in it? Anybody going to do that? Spend like 80 grand or 120 grand for a super sport car and then go and put like the lowest grade fuel in it? So why do we do that to our bodies, right? This is our vehicle. We want to have energy. We don't want it to peter out and, and uh, lose value, right? So why are we putting crap in it? Put good stuff in your bodies. And then conserve mental energy by making fewer decisions. So we're going to talk about this. All right, first, don't sacrifice sleep. <coughs> Let me see, where is that? Sleep. This is important. So they say you should get seven to nine hours of sleep. Any, who, who gets seven to nine hours of sleep besides me at night? Raise them high. Who gets more than nine hours? Who gets less than seven hours? All right. So you guys, a lot of times not because you're just so busy, it's because you're like, what, doing video games or chatting with people or watching Netflix or something like that. Okay, you need to get more sleep and then you'll have more energy. Let me tell you some of the things that they say about sleep. Medical studies relate lack of sleep to cognitive impairment, mood changes, trouble concentrating, difficulty making decisions. They found a dramatic suppression of activity in the prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain that's responsible for these executive decisions that we make each day and the executive functions, right? Um, and social control. So if you, you're kind of getting angry or frustrated with people, you need more sleep. So trying to go without sleep in order to work more actually makes you less productive. So more sleep actually can get more done. Not like 12 hours of sleep. 79, 79, all right? Number two, the food, let's see. Yeah, concentrating, sleep less, less productive. Okay, anybody get hangry? Yeah. So we don't wanna just eat stuff though to not be hangry. We wanna eat good food. And so that's super important as well. So, um, let's see, where to say? Okay, that's later. So, the, you know, the whole foods or like greens and vegetables and fruits, and there's lots of different things about diets and, and whatever. And we're not trying to like lose weight, but we're trying to give ourselves energy, right? Anybody realize the difference, whether you're an athlete or not, on if you're eating good food and the energy you have versus just kind of like, cereal and candy bars and PBJs and soda. I mean, there's an obvious difference, right? So again, we're the luxury automobile. Put good fuel in your car. Whoa. OK. This one is pretty interesting that I hadn't thought of, but this is the, one of the main things that research shows, is we have a certain amount of ability to make different decisions. We're making decisions all the time. Should I go to class? Where should I sit? Should I talk to this person? You know, there's like Cornell University said that we make about 35,000 decisions a day. That's a lot, right? All these little things, some from bigger things to smaller things. So a lot of them weren't even conscious decisions. We were just making them. And it says 226 decisions on food alone. So there's this thing called decision fatigue where you're making so many decisions that you're kind of getting sleepy and your, your, your brain's not working as much because you're making all these decisions. And it's a big challenge for leaders, right? So it says that we need to make sure that we don't take on or make too many decisions on less important things and we reserve our mental capacity, this mental energy, on the decisions that really have to be made that are, are critical, right? Protect our brain power by looking at the decisions. So if we look at this, how can we do it? Again, we talked about meditation, taking breaks, getting up and moving, having some exercise, uh, have a day of rest. So there's a lot of research that shows the benefit of um, one day a week. So some people take that on Sunday, right? Some people take it on Saturday. Some people work through the weekend and have it on a Tuesday, whatever it is. But trying to do less and recuperate and just 
our brains, when they're not having to always be stimulated and always be thinking and always be making decisions, allows it to kind of rejuvenate. So it does a lot of that when we're resting, which is why we need seven to nine hours. But even during the day, when we can just be like this lady here and meditate, right? Maybe we plan our daily schedule the night before, so when we get up, then we're just ready to go. Um, allows us to have better mental capacity. So these are some uh, quotes. If you can't read them, I think I've got them here. It says, take rest. A field that has rested gives a bountiful crop. You guys know that, right? You can't just keep planting the same thing and same crop and have it productive. So if we want a productive field, they rotate different crops, right? It's the same thing. We need to take rest uh, to have a bountiful crop. He that can take rest is greater than he that can take cities. Benjamin Franklin. And Leonardo da Vinci, every now and then go away, have a little relaxation, for when you come back to your work, your judgment will be sure. Okay, so all these guys are saying these things. So you want to create, now we're going to talk about um, delegation, elimination, and how to be more productive. So we've talked a little bit um, about reducing stress and increasing productivity and those kind of things, and now we're going to figure out how do you do more with less. Um, so, two key, two, two key questions. We're going to talk about eliminating tasks and not to-do list, right? Am I the best person to do this, and can I eliminate it? Anybody ever asked that before? If you're doing something, or am I the one that should be doing this, right? If we're saying yes to everybody else, and we're just doing stuff, stop and think, am I, is this, how is this, it's not that everything has to be about you, but... How is this benefiting me and my goals and my vision for life of being successful? Am I the, even the best person to do this? So we're going to talk about delegation. And sometimes, especially if you become a business owner or you're kind of like a control freak, you don't want other people to do it because they're not going to do it as good as you. Anybody like that? You guys need to learn delegation because uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it in just a minute. So it's not just the output, but the quality of the output. And then this is super key. Deep, deep, uninterrupted work and unbroken concentration. So they did this study, and they showed, again, these people that can do more in like two, three, four hours than everybody else in the day. It is unbroken, deep concentration. Because again, this micro slicing, if we get, oh, here's this. Oh, there's an email. Ding, there's over here. And we're getting all these notifications. It takes the whole day to get something done that we could do in an hour and a half a lot of times. So turn everything off. Anybody tried this? Like just isolate yourself. Maybe you went to the library and locked yourself in a room and turned your phone off and your notifications off on your computer if you were using a computer and just focused. Did you, and, and during a time with high energy. You think you get a lot done during that time? Yeah, a lot. So try that. It's uh, super helpful. All right, let me see if there's anything else on here. There's a lot of research on these ones that I wanted to make sure I got, I got to. So um, look up, if, you, if you're interested in, say, if you can't say no, look up uh, Google the art of saying no and watch some of the videos and read some of the stuff. Because one of the things, again, is in life coaching that I found is that we have to practice even with people is saying no and creating a not to-do list of things. They, and they say, well, I feel so bad, you know? And, and, I'm like, well, you're not living out your life. You're living out somebody else's life. All right, let me just, automation. Anybody, what's automation? So the first one was elimination. Is there anything we can eliminate from my life that I don't need to be doing? Second one is automation. How do you automate stuff? Anybody pay bills? You know how they have like, automatic payments. You heard of that before? So I have multiple properties that I have. If I had to every month go in and pay the electric bill and the utility bill and the cable bill for my Airbnbs and then the, the mortgage or the rent payments, okay, that takes a lot of time. I don't want to do that. I set it up automated and it just does it and I get notified in my email or whatever and I just stick it over in my folder, right? That sounds better than going in and taking time to do it every single month for multiple properties, right? So think about what can you automate in your life that will save you time 
and help you be more, per, more productive in less time. First, what can you eliminate? Second, what can you automate? And then this is somewhat difficult, maybe in your stage of life, than if you were, say, in the boss or something. But uh, what can you delegate? Are there things that you can delegate? So a lot of uh, people that I know, again, they are control freaks, and they want to do everything, and they don't allow other, their other classmates or people on their teams or employees to show that they have worth and can do stuff, right? Even in church settings, right? We have these responsibilities of being in charge of the uh, holiday party. And people are there to help and want to help. And instead of delegating and just trusting that they can do it, showing the vision and allowing them to move forward, we feel like we have to micromanage everything. And if that's not going to get done right, so I have to do it. So if you're like that or know people like that, you need to start learning about, and you can watch, we're not going to do this, but the art of delegation as well is a video that you can watch. And so it creates more time for yourself, one thing. Two, it shows that you have trust, right, in other people, and they have these hidden strengths and opportunities to grow. And then it allows you to focus on what is yours truly and gives it, make it, uh, so basically, it's focus on what you do best, right? If there's five things to do, what do you do best? And allow and trust other people to be able to do things and show and grow. Because if, if they're not taking on responsibility and doing things, then they're not growing. So if you're starting uh, with a group or in a employment or on a team or working with a professor or whatever, I have a student that's come, um, coming and working with me right now, wants to learn real estate. And so he's doing some of the, what you'd call the, uh, the grunt work, right? The finding the different things that takes a lot of time but isn't like the closing the deal. So I delegated that to him because he wanted to learn it and I did that myself, but that's how you learn. So I'm trusting him and allowing him to learn and grow in that way and then we can move him to something else. So what, do you guys, what are your thoughts about uh, elimination, automation and delegation? Any thoughts or questions or how you could implement it? Examples of things that you could do to save more time? Come on, you guys have some. Kind of like plan ahead. Okay. So, like, you know what you're going to do. So, like, let them know what they need to do. Yeah, if you have a plan and you sit down, then you know what they're going to do and they know what they're going to do. and. So you can delegate different assignments, right? So anybody know uh, Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? That ring a bell? So he talks about instead of um, prioritizing our schedule, we should schedule our priorities. Does that make sense? And instead of scheduling on a daily, schedule weekly. So you look at the week and plan ahead and say, Here's the things that need to happen this week. And then you, these are my priorities, right? Again, different roles. As a husband, as a father, as a professor, right? As a teacher, as a whatever, Sunday school teacher, right? There's different things, priorities that I need to accomplish. When in my schedule do I want to set those? And then I put them in different times with enough time, focus time, when I have energy to get those more important things accomplished. And then other stuff can kind of fill in around it, right? There's always going to be email and always going to be other stuff. So instead of every day looking and trying to not really know what's coming up and, and prioritizing the schedule that you may have, you figure out beforehand what those priorities are and you schedule your priorities. Does that make sense? And you try to schedule them again in times when you have more energy and can do uninterrupted time, focus time, with low interruptions. One of the things I challenge you guys to do, we talked about this, but I just want to emphasize it, is to figure out how to be in a place and minimize your interruptions. So you guys get notifications on your computer, right? You have your phone on buzz. Um, maybe you're trying to do homework around people and there's the TV on or people keep trying to talk to you. <clears throat> I want to challenge you if you have some important things that you want to focus on to try to go somewhere and block everything out and, and see how that works during a time that you have high energy, OK? All right, so here's just uh, Hyatt, Michael Hyatt. He's kind of a success principles guy as well. 
And um, he talks about the five levels of delegation. So this may help you now, but hopefully it'll definitely help you as you progress in life and get into businesses and things. And some of you will own businesses or be managers and things like that, okay? So level one, and, and maybe you're being delegated things. And so where, what level are you on and how can you get up to this area? Level one, do exactly what I have asked you to do. Here's the plan, do it, don't deviate from it. So that's a delegation, but do you have any creativity or ability to deviate? No, just do this and don't do anything else. So that's kind of like, maybe you do that in your job, right? They tell you just do this and that's what you have to do. Two, research the topic and then report back to me. Don't make any decisions, don't do anything, but bring the information back so I can make the decision. So at least we're allowing people to find stuff out and, and bring it, right? Number three is they find stuff out and then they outline different options that they think would be good, right? So now they're using their creativity. They're saying, this is the, the issue, here's some uh, possible solutions, and these are some things that I think we should do. Does that, that's even better, right? You're showing that you can do these. If it were me, based on the research, what would you do? Then four is, you make the decision, you research it, figure it out, I now trust you more, you make the decisions, but still tell me what you did. Because if you did something, I mean, most of the time you do a good job, but once in a while, maybe not, and I just need to follow up. Five, after you've done that for a while and you totally trust the person, make whatever decision you think is best. I'm taking this off my plate, giving it to you, I trust you, you get it done. You see the different types of delegation? So as you can become a better, more trusted person with these, then you can shine and learn and show that. But then as you're a manager or delegating things, you should be thinking about what kind of delegation are you doing? And if you're the micromanager here, try to figure out how to move over to this area over here, all right? So hopefully you've learned some things about um, managing your energy and feeding your super uh, sonic um, bodies, right, with good food, getting enough sleep, lowering distractions, and uh, being more productive by doing less, by automating, delegating, and eliminating. All right, so next week we don't meet, then there's Thanksgiving, so, but next week there are assignments, so do those. So I'll see you guys in like uh, two and a half weeks.